Sutra. The Bodhisattva's division bodies, measureless millions, make offerings to all thirsty commons with spiritual penetrations which transformationally appear supreme and unequaled. He is able to dwell in all the places where the Buddhas practice. Measureless Buddhas places are all penetrated and gazed upon. All the treasury of Dhammas are dotted upon and savored. He sees the Buddhas, hears the Dhammas, and diligently cultivates as if drinking sweet dew. His heart is delighted. Commentary The Bodhisattvas, the one who has brought forth the Bodhi mind, has division bodies, measureless millions, by means of the transformations from his spiritual penetrations, that many division bodies appear. They are innumerable. They make offerings to all thirst commons. What do these measureless division bodies do? They travel everywhere through the world systems of the ten directions and make offerings to all Buddhas, thirst commons, with spiritual penetrations which transformationally appear supreme and unequaled. The Bodhisattva's spiritual penetrations and transformations are the most rare and supreme. None are able to compare with them. He is able to dwell in all the places where the Buddhas practice. The Bodhisattva is able to go to all the places in the ten directions where the Buddhas teach and transform living beings and make offerings to those Buddhas. Measureless Buddha's places are all penetrated and gazed upon. The Bodhisattva is able to go to measureless Buddha lands and deeply investigate all the Dharma spoken by the Buddhas. Basically, the Buddha is very solid and durable and not easy to penetrate, yet he wants to investigate it. The Buddha Dharma is very high and he gazes upon it. He also wants to exhaust his strength to study it. All the treasury of dramas are dotted upon and savored. He is able to seek the flavor of the treasury of all Buddha's dramas. He sees the Buddhas, hears the dramas, and diligently cultivates. He sees all Buddhas and hears all the dramas, and then diligently cultivates them. As if drinking sweet dew, his heart is delighted. When the Bodhisattva comprehends the Buddha Dharma, it is just like drinking sweet dew which dispels one's thirst and wipes out one's greed, hatred and stupidity. So one's heart gives rise to great joy. Sutra, he has already obtained the thirst commons of supreme samadhis. He well enters all Buddhas and his wisdom increases. With a heart of faith unmoving like Sumeru, he acts as a treasury of merit and virtue for living beings everywhere. His kind heart is vast and pervades living beings. He vows that they will quickly realize all wisdom, yet he is always without attachment or a place of reliance. Apart from all afflictions, he has obtained freedom and ease. He sympathizes with living beings, using vast wisdom, and everywhere gathers in all the same as himself. He knows they are empty without appearances or actuality, yet he cultivates and his mind neither becomes lax nor retreats. The measure of the merit and virtue of a Bodhisattva's bringing forth the resolve cannot be completely lauded, even for millions of compass. Because it produces all thirst come ones, the solitarily enlightened ones and sound hearers are peaceful and happy. All living beings in the lands of the ten directions are all given peace for measureless compass. He exhausts them to uphold the five precepts and the ten goods and the four dinners and the stations of the other four concentrations. Commentary He has already obtained the third common supreme samadhis. The Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind has already obtained the Buddha's supreme samadhis. 
he well enters all dharmas and his wisdom increases he skillfully enters penetrates and explains all dharmas so that his wisdom increases day by day with a heart of faith unmoving like sumeru the bodhisattva's heart of faith cannot be moved nor made to retreat and is as solid as Mount Sumeru. He acts as a treasury of marriage and virtue for living beings everywhere. His kind heart is vast and pervades living beings. The Bodhisattva's heart of kindness and compassion is vast and it pervades all living beings. He vows that they will quickly realize all wisdom. He vows that all living beings will quickly realize all wisdom, yet he is always without attachment or a place of reliance. Although he has attained all wisdom, the Bodhisattva's heart is without any attachment or a place on which it relies. He also wishes to cause the hearts of living beings to be without any attachment or a place of all reliance. Apart from all afflictions, he has obtained freedom and ease. Why are living beings living beings? Because they haven't been able to separate from afflictions, then they would obtain freedom and ease. He sympathizes with living beings using vast wisdom. The Bodhisattva has sympathy towards all living beings and he also uses expansive wisdom to benefit them and everywhere gathers in all the same as himself. He protects and cherishes all living beings in the same way. He protects himself. He knows they are empty without appearances or actuality. The Bodhisattva knows that all dharmas are empty and not real, yet he cultivates and his mind neither becomes likes nor retreats. Although everything is empty, Still, the Bodhisattva who cultivated the Bodhisattva path is not lazy and he does not turn back. Day by day, he becomes more vigorous. The measure of the merit and virtue of a Bodhisattva is bringing forth the resolve. The measure of such merit and virtue cannot be completely loaded even for millions of compass. Even if one loads and praises the merit and virtue, of the Bodhisattva who first brought forth the body mind for measureless millions of compass, one still would not finish speaking about it, because it produces all thus come ones. Why is the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind inexhaustible? Because it is able to produce all the thus come ones. All Buddhas in the past cultivated the Bodhisattva path and then became Buddhas, so that the solitarily enlightened ones and sound hearers are peaceful and happy. This merit and virtue causes all of the sound hearers and those enlightened to conditions to obtain peace and happiness. All living beings in the lands of the ten directions are all given peace for measureless compass. The Bodhisattva always cultivates giving in the lands of the ten directions to cause living beings to obtain peace and happiness, doing so throughout measureless compass. He exhausts them to uphold the five precepts and the ten goods. He exhausts all living beings to receive and uphold the five precepts which are not killing, not stealing, not engaging in improper sex, not lying, and not taking intoxicants. When one practices the ten good acts with the body, one does not kill, steal, or engage in improper sex. With the mouth, one does not engage in evil, divisive, false, or harsh speech. And with the mind, one does not have greed, hatred, or stupidity. If one turns the ten evils around, they become ten, the ten goods. And the four dinners and the station of the other four concentrations. The four dinners are the first, second, third, and fourth dinners. And the other four are the four stations of emptiness. The station of limitless space. 
the station of limitless consciousness, the station of nothing whatsoever, and the station of neither thought nor non-thought, together with the concentrations of the extinctions of feeling and thought, these are called the nine successive concentrations. Sutra. Moreover, for many compass he bestows peace and happiness, causing them to several delusions and become at our hearts. Although that collection of blessings is measureless, it does not compare to the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind. He also teaches the millions of multitudes to become enlightened to conditions. So they obtain the practice of non-contention of the subtly wondrous path if that were is to gouge the body mind. Neither calculations nor analogies could compare to it. Within a single thought, he is able to traverse treacherous as numerous as desmos. In this way, he passes through measureless compass, but the numbers of these treasures can still be measured, but the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind cannot be known. Commentary, moreover, for many compass he bestows peace and happiness. For many compass in the past he has given living beings security and joy, causing them to sever delusions and become a hearts. He causes all living beings to cut off delusion, certify to the truth, and accomplish the path of a hardship. Although that collection of blessings is measureless, although the blessings of and virtue from this is measureless and limitless, it does not compare to the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind, yet it cannot be compared with the merit and virtue from the first bringing forth the body mind from first bringing forth the body mind he also teaches the millions of multitudes to become enlightened to conditions he also teaches a quadrillion quadrillion living beings to accomplish the path of those enlightened to conditions so they obtain the practice of non-contention of the subtly wondrous path they obtain the samadhi of non-contention and the subtly wondrous and inconceivable path if that were used to gouge the buddhi mind. If the act of teaching living beings to become once enlightened to conditions was compared to the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the buddhi mind, neither can calculations nor analogies could compare to it. There is no way that calculations or analogies can compare with that merit and virtue. Within a single thought, he is able to traverse treacherous as numerous as dust most. In a single thought, he is able to pass beyond treacherous as numerous as dust particles. In this way, he passes through measureless compass. He further passes through such a long time of measureless compass. The numbers of these stretchers can still be measured. Although that is such a long time and there are so many Buddha stretchers, yet one can still calculate stretchers. But the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind cannot be known. No one can know how great the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who has first brought forth the body mind is Sutra in the past, future and present, the number of all compasses without limit or measure. The number of these compasses can still be known, but the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind is unfathomable. Using the body mind to pervade the ten directions, there are no differentiations which are not known. In a single thought, the three Buddhas of time are all clearly penetrated, thereby he benefits measureless living beings. The living beings of the world systems of the ten directions, their desires, understandings, expedient methods, intentions, and what they do, as well as the bounds of space, can still be fathomed. But the measure of the merit and virtue 
from first the bringing forth the mind is hard to know. The Bodhisattva's vows are equal to the ten directions. His kind heart permits the flocks of beings everywhere. All calls to cultivate and accomplish the Buddha's merit and virtue. Therefore, his power is boundless, leaving beings' desires, understandings, and what delights their hearts. Their rules and the expedient methods they practice are each different. Within a single thought, all understood, and all wisdom and the wisdom mind are equal and the same. All living beings' delusions and karma continue throughout the three realms without momentary interruption. The limits of these can still be known, but the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind is difficult to conceive. By bringing forth the mind, one is able to separate from the afflictions of karma and make offerings to all thus come ones. When karma and delusion are left behind and the continuity is severed everywhere throughout the three births of time, one is liberated. Commentary in the past, future and present. The number of all compasses is without limit or measure. How many compasses are there throughout the past, future, and present? Basically, their number cannot be fathomed. The enter of this compass still can still be known, although normally those compass cannot be fathomed. Nonetheless, their quantity can still be known. But the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind is unfathomable. Using the body mind to pervade the ten directions, there are no differentiations which are not known. If one uses a body resolve that is so vast that it permits the worlds of the ten directions, then the root natures of all living beings can be completely understood. In a single thought, the three periods of time are all clearly penetrated. The past, present, and future are totally comprehended within a single thought. Thereby, he benefits measureless living beings in this way. The Bodhisattva who resolves his mind on Buddhi causes living beings to live suffering and attain bliss and to cast off birth and death. The living beings of the world systems of the ten directions are very many. Their desires, understanding, expedient methods, intentions, and what they do, as well as the bounds of space, can still be fathomed. Living beings' desires, understandings, skilling means intentions and deeds, and even the bounds of space can still be fathomed, measured, and known. But the measure of the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the mind is hard to know. The Bodhisattva's merit and virtue from first bringing forth the mind body is not easy known. There is no way it can be measured. The Bodhisattva's vows are equal to the ten directions. They fully pervade the ten directions. His kind heart permits the flocks of beings everywhere. He uses a heart of kindness and compassion to cross over living beings everywhere so that they all live suffering and obtain happiness. All are caused to cultivate and accomplish the Buddha's merit and virtue. He wants to cause all living beings to become Buddhas and perfect all the merit and virtue of the Buddhas as well. Therefore, his power is boundless. Because of that, the power from the merit and virtue of first bringing forth the Buddha mind has no bounds. Living beings' desires, understandings, and what delights their hearts. What living beings desire, what they wish to understand, everything which their hearts want, their roots, and the expedient methods to they practice are each different. Their faculty are not the same. Actor of the skilling means they practice is also different. 
within a single thought or understood, although he's, this is a very complex situation, the Bodhisattva can, can comprehend it all in a single thought. All wisdom and the wisdom mind are equal and uh, the same. This is because all wisdom and the wisdom mind are identical. All living beings and delusions and karma. Living beings give rise to delusion, create karma and undergo the retribution and continue throughout the three realms without a momentary interruption. The states of existence of the desire of form and formless realms are continuous and unceasing without a single moment's respite the limits of this can still be known living beings karmic delusions and all those other things can still be known but, but the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind is difficult to conceive the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the buddhi mind is inconceivable by bringing forth the mind, one is able to separate from the afflictions of karma. If you bring forth the Buddha mind, you will be able to leave far behind all deluded karma and all afflictions and make offerings to all thus come ones. You will be able to stand safe making offerings to all Buddhas. When karma and delusion are left behind and the Continuity is severed, where the karma of continuously flowing and turning in birth and death can be severed. Everywhere throughout the three periods of time, one is liberated. Liberation is obtained everywhere throughout the past, present, and future.